Hello friends, this video on air and water pollution part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next is the maintenance of automobiles. What can we do so that the emission from automobiles are less dangerous? So one thing that we can do is use of catalytic converters. So what are catalytic converters? Now again these are small devices which are fitted inside the automobiles because it can convert more harmful gases into less harmful ones. So it reduces the emission of harmful gases. So what it is? So what it actually does? We will look at the exact function of catalytic converter in the next slide. But mainly it helps to reduce the uh, toxic nature of the emission. The next thing that can be done is use of lead free petrol or diesel. Now why lead free? Because if lead is present then it interferes with the function of catalytic converters. So lead, presence of lead doesn't allow the catalytic converter to do its job. So therefore if we want catalytic converter to do its job in that case lead should not be present. So lead free petrol or diesel should be used. Reduce sulfur or aromatic content in petrol or diesel because by now we already know how harmful sulfur is, sulfate or sulfur dioxides, they are all extremely harmful. So the content of sulfur should be reduced in petrol or diesel. So now you understand why petrol or diesel, they are not very good fuels as far as uh, environment is considered because they contain lead, they contain sulfur and they are all extremely harmful to the environment. And that is why it is always advised to prefer CNG over petrol or diesel. So what is CNG? CNG is compressed natural gas. Now CNG has quite a few advantages over petrol and diesel because of which the, it has been, uh, it, it was ordered in around 2002 in Delhi that all the modes of public transport like all the buses and autos, they need to be converted to run on CNG. And it brought a huge difference to the level of air pollution in Delhi. In Delhi, Delhi is one of the uh, most populated cities in our country. Now, after uh, converting the public transport vehicles into CNG, the air pollution has reduced to a large extent. Now, some of the advantages of CNG over petrol or diesel are it is comparatively cheaper, so cost-wise it is quite effective. Secondly, it burns efficiently. When I say efficiently, that means that it doesn't leave a lot of residue. So unburned residue is very less. Now, in case of fuels which leave a lot of unburned residue, in that case, that residue is going to cause pollution because that residue contains so many harmful substances and they just remain in the environment. But with CNG, very less amount of residue is there. So obviously, the pollution that will be caused will also be very less. So due to all these advantages of CNG over petrol and diesel, it is uh, always preferred to convert the vehicles to run on CNG rather than petrol or diesel. So now let us see what is a catalytic converter. So as I said, that catalytic converter, the name itself says that it is a device which has a catalyst. So it is basically a vehicle emission control device. So it is going to control the emission of harmful gases from vehicles. So what does it contain? So it contains certain substances which acts as catalysts. So what are those catalysts? It contains these elements, platinum or palladium or rhodium. So these elements act as catalyst in a catalytic converter. Now, do you all know what is a catalyst? You might have studied it in your chemistry. Even if not, so I'll just tell you. So catalyst is a substance which increases the rate of a chemical reaction. So it fastens the reaction, but it itself remains unaltered. So nothing will happen to the catalyst, but due to the presence of the catalyst, the chemical reaction will speed up. So it speeds up a chemical reaction. So that is the role of catalyst. So in this uh, a catalytic converter also we have one of these either platinum or palladium or rhodium which acts as a catalyst. So what does it do by acting as a catalyst? It tries to convert the more toxic pollutants into less toxic ones. So how exactly it does that? 
So it basically converts the unburnt hydrocarbons into carbon dioxide and water. So whatever unburnt hydrocarbons are present, so the unburnt hydrocarbons get converted into carbon dioxide and water. So it converts the more harmful gases like carbon monoxide or nitric oxides for example, carbon monoxide gets converted into carbon dioxide. So this is how the reaction takes place. So this is how this carbon monoxide is more harmful. So at least carbon dioxide is less harmful than carbon monoxide. So it converts carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide and it also converts the nitric oxides like let us suppose this is nitric oxide so it converts this nitric oxide into nitrogen gas so again nitrogen gas is less harmful as compared to nitric oxides and what do these catalysts do these catalysts catalyze the redox reaction redox reactions are these reactions where reduction and oxidation both take place so I will not get into the detail of redox reaction, but you just understand that during these conversions, these catalysts speed up these reactions and that's why these reactions take place very fast. So as a result, what will happen? All the carbon monoxide gets converted into carbon dioxide, the nitric oxides get converted into nitrogen. So that's how uh, the catalytic converters work. Now these catalytic converters are also of two types. Now some converters are two-way converters, whereas some converters are three-way converters. So what happens in two-way converters? In two-way converters, the unburned hydrocarbons like C6H2X plus 2. So this is an unburned hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is something which contains hydrogen and carbon. So X is just trying to determine it can take up any value like for methane, ethane, the value of X changes. So if this is an unburnt hydrocarbon, so when this combines with oxygen, it forms carbon dioxide and water. So if you want to balance this equation, so this is how it is going to be. Now please do not try to understand, if, if you are not able to understand the reaction or balancing of the reaction, doesn't matter. You learn all that in your chemistry. But for now, you just try to understand the concept that what happens. So in two-way converter, these unburnt hydrocarbon will get converted into carbon dioxide and water and carbon monoxide will convert get converted into carbon dioxide. So this is what happens in a two-way catalytic converter. Now there is another type of converter also which is called a three-way converter. So that is called a three-way converter. Now what happens in a three-way converter? Here three reactions, three conversions take place. One is this one where hydrocarbons getting converted to carbon dioxide and water. One is this one where carbon monoxide gets converted to carbon dioxide and the third one where nitric oxide gets converted into oxygen and nitrogen. So all these three together form the three-way catalytic converter. So this is how catalytic converter works and this is how in the picture you can see this is how a catalytic converter looks. So if you see from this side goes in the more toxic substances and from this side comes out the less toxic substances. So it is fitted in the automobile so that I mean had this catalytic converter not been there in that case this more toxic gases would have been released into the atmosphere. But now since this is there so more toxic will be converted to less toxic and then the less toxic ones will be released into the atmosphere. So that is how catalytic converter helps in controlling the vehicle emission. Now in the previous slide, I was telling you that lead doesn't allow these catalysts to work. That's because in the presence of lead, these catalysts, they get inactivated. Now if the catalysts become inactivated, then these reactions will not be able to take place. And if these reactions don't take place, then the catalytic converter is actually not working. So that is why it is uh, taken care that, okay, if the catalytic converter is in place, then we need to make sure that the petrol or the diesel doesn't contain any lead because lead will inactivate the catalyst and will therefore not allow catalytic converter to do its job. So these are some of the ways by which we can control air pollution. So we have discussed quite a few things about air pollution. Now we are going to... Thank you. 
Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.